Hi, today I thought we'd look at fonts. <clears throat> Our Scan and Cut machine has five built-in fonts, complete with upper and lower case, number and punctuation. And for many, this will be enough to see them produce some great cards and scrapbooking titles that you can cut individual letters or weld them together directly onto the machine. And you can do all that to great effect. Brother has also given us five more fonts in their online software Scan and Cut Canvas, which we can use for even more creativity. But what if the choices we have just don't suit the project we're working on? In that instance, we have to use third party software. I've seen and heard people saying that they create words in word processing packages and either print them out and scan them into the scan and cut machine or create a word in other software, take it into yet more software, then convert it online into an SVG file and it goes on and on. To be honest, all these things will have an effect on how the finished project will cut and sometimes they do not cut very well at all. And I know from emails and messages that I've been receiving, people are getting frustrated with their machines, doubting its ability to cut, doubting the ability of the blade, the stickiness or not of the mat, and not everyone seems to know what gram or pound weight their chosen media is, so therefore can't choose the correct settings. You have to realise when working with these electronic cutting machines, you're using a moving and rotating blade that works on a moving platform. You have to give the machine every opportunity to give you the best result it can. Your scan and cut canvas has the ability to create and open FCM files. So in other words, file formats that work with your scan and cut machine. It also has the ability to import SVG files. And these are files that you create in third party software that save files in an SVG format and you can then open them directly in Canvas and it will convert them. OK, so scan and cut files are easy. We create them in Canvas, we download them onto a USB stick and we insert that into the machine and we cut them. SVG files, we can use a program called Inkscape. It will let you use any true type font you have on your computer and there are loads available free on the internet that you can download and install. There's loads of videos on YouTube on how to download and install fonts. I'm not going to go into that here. Fonts that are available come in all shapes, styles and sizes. You've got fonts that are already welded together. You've got fonts that look like handwriting. And then you've got dingbats. These little beauties are small images that work like a font and we can create cut files from them using all manner of shapes and sizes. On the screen, you can see here various different fonts that I've been playing around with, and these are all fonts. So this, this word here is taken from the basic fonts within the Scan and Cut Canvas. This word here is a font that is already welded together when you write your word in Inkscape as is this one, okay. This one, this one, this one, this one, and this one are all Impact, which is a standard font, as far as I'm aware, available on all Windows computers. And I work on a Mac and it's available on my Mac. And this one is Impact as well, just welded vertically rather than horizontally. This font here is called Scriptina. It's, as it says, a very scripty type curly font. And at this particular size that I have on my screen here, which as you can see here is 1.1 inches high by 2.1 inches wide, you wouldn't want to try cutting it. But I have cut this font on previous cutting machines, but quite big for a scrapbook page. But for a written font, this is brilliant. And so is this font here. And I can't remember the name, but I will put links in the comment box below. This is a font, believe it or not. It's a dingbat, dingbat and so is this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to open um, Inkscape and I'm going to jump right in because YouTube has a 15 minute limit and I want to try and keep the video as near to that as possible. So first of all, I'm going to click on the text tool and I'm going to start typing impact up here to choose impact. I'm going to leave it on 144. One thing I would say is down here, I'm working at 50% view, which means everything that I see on my screen is obviously half size. 
And one thing I want you to do for me, if you can, to make sure that you're seeing in your Inkscape page the same as I'm seeing, is make sure you've got default selected down here under the view tab. And then also under the view tab, go to the show and hide and make sure you've got all these toolbars ticked. Okay, so that said, I've got my font. I can see I've got an A on the end of my cursor. I'm going to click once on my page and I'm going to type the word hello. And then I'm going to hit the select tool. Now, obviously, each one of those letters you can see is individual, but when I click off and click back on it, that's a group, okay? And if all you wanted to do was save that file now and then import that into Canvas and cut that, that's fine, that's all you need to do. But there's one very important step that you have to do, else this file will not import into Canvas. While this word is selected, you have to go to Path, Union. It doesn't look as though anything's happened, but by doing that, this file will now open in Canvas. Okay, so what if you want a matting layer for it? Okay, so while it's selected, right click and click duplicate. That's put a duplicate directly on top. You can't see it, but it is there. Go to Path and click Outset, and you can see that it jumps a little bit bigger. Go to Path, Outset, you can see it's gone bigger still, and Path, Outset. There is a shortcut that you can use, but I'm just showing you how to do it this way for now. I'm going to put my mouse over this, and when you see the hand, I'm going to drag that down. And you can now see that this is a lot bigger than that. So this is my matting layer. I'm going to right click on this color and choose set fill, and I'm going to right click on the same color and choose set stroke, just to give you an idea so of what it looks like on the screen. I'm going to select my word, drag it over. I know it's gone behind, but I know it's my word that's selected. And I'm going to come over here and click raise to top. So that now is my word with my mat that I could cut. Okay, you want to do joined up letters and you're not using a font that is already welded. So for, for this purposes, we'll use the same font. Click on the page. H-E-L-L-O. Now, what you have to do is double click between your characters and that gives you a flashing cursor. Hold down the Alt key on your keyboard and then on the arrow keys, the four arrows, I'm going to use my left arrow and keep pressing it and you can see I'm moving it over. I'm going to click in the middle of the E and the L and do the same thing and move that over. I'm going to click in the middle again and you move that over. And then I'm going to click again and use the left arrow and move that over. But you could use the up arrows or the down arrows as well and move them about as you wish. I'm going to select, use the, the, the select arrow here to select all that word and I'm going to go path union. Now in this instance, that union has welded those letters together and I'm going to go to view, display and outline so you can see. Okay, so whereas I had to do the union here to make the, the word open in canvas, I've used the union function to weld these letters so that by virtue of doing that will mean that this word will open in canvas. If for any reason you create something in Inkscape and save it as an SVG file and then you go to open it and it, and it won't open in canvas, just reopen your SVG file, select your word and just go to this path union again and then save it and then reopen it in canvas and it should open okay so i'm going to go back to normal view so you can see so again i want a map for this word i'm going to go duplicate i'm going to go path outset path outset path outset you can do this as many times as you want you'll get different effects depending on what font and what size you're using but for now, we'll leave it at that. I'll choose red this time. So I'm going to right click on the red, set fill, right click, stroke. While that's selected, I'm going to send that to the back. There you go. So I've got a mat and a layer. OK, as I say, some fonts um, work best for handwriting. So I'm going to select this and I'm going to start typing scriptina. And that's chosen scriptina. I'm going to click down here and I'm going to type the same word. Hello. I'm just going to bring this back into view so you can see it. I'm going to resize it because I may want to write this with the pen tool. 
while it's selected you've got to do the path union i can't stress enough if you don't do that it will not open in canvas okay so that's now a font that i could use the pen tool with now i'm going to go back to my text tool and if you click on here it should bring up all the fonts that are installed on your computer but i want to choose a font called seru's flowerding so i'm just going to start typing and it will bring it up for me going to click once on the page and dingbats are little pictures that are assigned to letters or numbers of the alphabet and when you download your font there is usually a screenshot that shows you which picture goes with which letter and if you forget it you basically just have to click each letter on your keyboard and see what you get I'm, I'm pressing A, B, C, D etc there I'm going to go and get rid of those. The one I want is a capital letter F. So I'm going to choose my text. I'm still on Sarah's flowerding. I'm going to click once on my page and I'm going to choose capital letter F. Now again, I'm going to select it. I'm going to go path union. I have to do that else it will not open. Then from here, I can do whatever I want with this. I can right click and duplicate it. I could put two together and join them together and go path union and weld them. I'm going to go to view, display, outline to make sure they've welded and you can see I've welded them. Go back to normal view so you can see better. I can um, click the text tool, click once on the page, use the letter F again. I can resize it, I can drag it down, but I must do path union every time, okay? Again, you can create a map for it. Go to right click, duplicate, path, outset, path, outset, path, outset, drag that one away. I'll choose a nice shade of blue, right click, set fill, right click, set the stroke, put that on top of there, centre back. It doesn't matter which way you do, either centre back or bring forward as long as you know which one you've got chosen. Okay. So that's that. I'm just going to get rid of that one for now because I don't really need it. I just want to show you something in Canvas. But I'm just going to choose one last one. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to type Kitty because I know this one's called Kitty Cat. I'm going to click once on my page to get my flashing cursor. And this time I need a lowercase i. I'm going to use the select tool. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. And again, it's a font. I have to go path union. But from here, I can do the same thing. I can duplicate it. I can go to path, outset, path, outset, path, outset, drag that one away. We'll make this cat yellow. Just, it's a bit bright, isn't it? But never mind. We'll bring that one on top, bring that one to the top. And you can see I've got my matting layers and they're all from fonts. You need to have a play around with the software just play around with the words. There's another way of typing text as well, just very quickly. You can literally click once on the page and type a letter. Oh, it would help if I was in a word font. Sorry, I'll get rid of that. We'll go back to impact. Okay, so you can click once on your page, type a letter, click somewhere else, type a letter, click somewhere else, type a letter. And then again, you can bring these over and you can, you know, do whatever you want with them and go path union. That welds them, it also gives you that union function, which means that that will then open in Canvas. So I'm going to save this now, file save as, I'm going to call it test.svg. I'm going to save it on my desktop so I know where it is. And then I'm just going to minimise that out of the way. I'm going to come to Canvas, I'm going to open a new project in Canvas. I'm going to go to project import SVG because that's what I've just saved in Inkscape. I'm going to go to my desktop, find that test SVG file and open it. And providing I remember to do the path union on all my words, it should open in Canvas for us. Okay, there it is. So there's my cat, there's my mat, there's my flower, there's my mat. I'll get rid of that one because I don't need that one for now. But there's my word, there's my mat, there's my other word, and there's my mat, and here's my font for writing in. Now, one thing I would say is, 
if you are using a font just specifically for writing and you're not going to cut it if you create it small like this I would get into the habit of once you're in canvas making sure you assign cut lines or draw lines so if I save this whole map now I'll just call it test and save it Right, if I click on these and go to properties, you will see that by default, Canvas saves everything as a cut or draw line. So if I click on that, it's the same. Click on that, it's the same. Okay, if you want to write words on a project, say you're creating the front of a card and you've cut a shape, you've got a shape on here and you want to put the word hello on it and you want your scan and cut Canvas to cut the word, cut the shape and write the word. What you have to do is make sure you assign cut lines and draw lines. So I'm going to get rid of some of these just to because I don't need them for now. So say this was a shape you wanted to cut. You'd click on that, you'd go up to here to properties and you'd select cut line. Then you'd go to your letter to your words and you'd go up to here and you'd choose draw and close it. And then you'd save it. And then you choose download. It's given the name that I put up here. You choose right click, download link file. I'm gonna just put it on my desktop for now and save it. And that's it. Now, when you put that file onto your USB stick and you load that into your scan and cut machine, because you've set this, as a draw line and you've set this as a cut line when you open this mat in your canvas and you only want to draw with the pen this will appear on your screen in canvas in blue and this will appear in black because that's how the canvas machine recognizes cut or draw lines cut lines are in black on your screen draw lines are blue so you could literally put a pen in your machine choose draw and it would only select this word and it would draw that word and then it would stop and ask you is that okay and you could say yes and then you could go back and you could click cut and it would put this word on so you could layer that on top of there put that into canvas as long as this is selected as a draw line and this is selected as a cut line here before you bring it into your machine that is all it will do for you. It will draw that word, then you take your pen out of the machine and you put your blade in and it will cut that shape for you. Play around with it. It's brilliant. It really is. I'll put all the links below. If you've got any questions or comments, please contact me via YouTube or my blog. I hope that's helpful to you. Please like, share and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.